Now let's talk about the various origin insertions and attachments on the humerus bone. So let's talk about the insertions first as you are familiar with the muscles of insertion and these are mostly taking part on the upper part of the bone. So the abbreviation or mnemonic of insertions is S sit, TLP and CD. So it goes like S sit, TLP, C and D. So from above downwards, let's talk about S sit first. On the lesser tubercle of humerus, we have the insertion of S, the subscapularis muscle that we studied in scapula. Sit stands for the three impressions on the greater tubercle of the upper end of the humerus bone. These were the upper, middle and lower impressions. These consist of the sit muscles, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor. Let's go downwards. We have the T, L and P. So this, these correspond the lips of the intertubercular sulcus. So this is the intertubercular sulcus. The medial lip gives insertion to the T, which is teres major. The floor of the sulcus gives attachment to the or insertion to the L, which is latissimus dorsi. And finally, the lateral lip of the intertubercular sulcus gives insertion to that muscle we studied earlier, the pectoralis major, which was inserted into the lateral lip of the intertubercular sulcus via a bilaminar tendon. Moving on, we have the C and D, CD. The CD are two insertions of the coracobrachialis on the impression that was being formed on the medial border of the humerus that we talked about earlier. And D, D is for deltoid, which is being inserted in the V-shaped deltoid tuberosity in the anterolateral surface of the humerus. So that was all about the insertions. Let's talk about the origins. The origins of this bone are mostly in the lower part of the bone, except for the posterior surface where we have a couple of origins which are related to the triceps. So tricep means a muscle that has three heads. We talked about the long end of triceps originating from the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. What about the other two heads, which are the medial and lateral head? These originate from the posterior surface of the humerus, where the posterior surface is divided into an upper and lower by the radial groove. Upper part of the radial groove gives origin to the lateral head of the triceps. While just below the radial groove is this entire area is giving origination to the medial head of the triceps brachii. Moving on, let's go into the front of the shaft. The front part of the entire humerus in its lower part will give most of the origins. The anterolateral and anteromedial surface gives origin to our muscle, first muscle of the forearm called the brachialis. Yes. Most of the originations are muscles of forearm. Let's talk about the lateral supracondylar ridge and the lateral epicondyle. The lateral supracondylar ridge has an upper two-third and a lower one-third. The upper two-third of the lateral supracondylar ridge is giving, or giving origination to the, the brachioradialis, a muscle of the forearm yet again. The lower one-third of the lateral supracondylar ridge is giving origin to the... Okay, this is going to be tough the extensor carpi radialis longus muscle. Finally, the lateral epicondyle is giving origin to all of the extensors of the forearm. Hence, the lateral epicondyle, it can be said that there is the common extensor origin. Similarly, on the medial epicondyle, it is said that it gives common flexor origin to the flexors of the forearm. And going a little above on the medial supracondylar ridge in its lower part gives origin to the pronator teres muscle. So now we know that the brachialis is originating from the anterolateral anteromedial surface, brachioradialis from upper two-thirds of the lateral supracondylar ridge, tensor carpi radialis longus from the lower one-third, and common tensor origin in the lateral epicondyle and common flexor origin in the medial epicondyle with pronator teres accommodating this part. Posteriorly is a muscle called, it is called the anconius. And finally, I mentioned that the above the radial groove was the origin of the lateral head and below the radial groove was the origin of medial head of the
Apart from this, the attachments include a capsular ligament. The capsular ligament is basically a capsule of the joint that is being formed with the lower end of the humerus and the radius ulna. This involves the articular surfaces, of course. So the capsular ligament is occupying the margins of the articular surfaces in front and behind. So the margins of all these articular surfaces are giving uh, attachment to the capsular ligament. Well, on the shoulder joint, the capsular ligament is attached to the anatomical neck of the upper end of the humerus. The capsular ligament just in the medial part also goes two centimeters below and over here in the intertubercular sulcus it gives a little space to allow the tendon of biceps to enter. The contents of the intertubercular sulcus are the tendon of biceps brachii and the anterior circumflex humeral arteries ascending branch that we studied in the axillary artery. So that was all about the humerus bone.